Okay, so we're going to give you a little bit of an introduction to Pythagorean theorem. Now, that's a fancy word for a pretty simple concept, all right? That's, it's named after a Greek mathematician, Pythagoras, who first named this theorem, but it, he was not the first person to use this. In fact, this theorem was used by the Egyptians to build the pyramids. It's one of the most commonly used in all of building, all of math. So let's check it out, all right? So first thing, let's just start with some basics, all right? Number one, Pythagorean theorem applies only to right triangles. That's it. It has to be a triangle, and you have to have a right angle in that triangle for this theorem to work. All right, so that's the key thing. So remember, these are two examples of a right triangle. And notice right there, we got that symbol. Notice that square right there is the symbol of a right angle that, of course, stands for 90 degrees right there. All squares are 90 degrees. That's why they use the square to say when, when something is squared, that means it's a 90 degree angle. All right. It me, means the two sides are perpendicular. Again, that's another vocab we'll get into shortly. All right. So one thing it's not. Remember, this is not a right triangle. So if you have a triangle looking like that, eh, not going to work. You can't use Pythagorean theorem for that. And take a look at our friend, the rectangle. We know our rectangle has all 90 degree angles. However, it's not a triangle, so eh, try again on that one. All right, so that's the basics there. Let's continue and talk into the parts of the triangle that you want to make sure you're aware of. All right, so let's start. The sides of the right triangle, we have names for them. All right, so the first two right there, those are called your legs. All right, the legs of the right triangle. There are two of them. One is called, and if we're going to label it with actual letters, one is A, one is B. They're really interchangeable. As long as you know those are the legs, and again, the legs are the two sides that form the right angle. If you notice right there, that's what the right angle is made up in, of those two sides of the, of the triangle there. All right, the green side right there, that's a fancy, fancy word. It's called the hypotenuse. Yes, I said it, the hypotenuse. It looks exactly, it, sa it sounds exactly like it looks, and we call that letter C. All right, so what I always say to students, listen, as long as you know A and B are the legs, those are interchangeable, the hypotenuse has to be C there. All right, and remember, that is the side opposite the right angle. All right, so as you're looking at triangles, here are a couple hints. All right, a couple of hints for locating legs and the hypotenuse in a right triangle. First, the legs, remember, form the L shape. In fact, right there, you notice, you can see right there, that's two sides of a triangle in the, in the letter L as it is. So as soon as you see that L, those are your legs. Legs start with L. So easy to remember. And remember that the legs always touch the 90 degree angle. They're always in contact. They form the right angle. All right. For the hypotenuse, remember the hypotenuse, that's always the longest side in the right triangle. Okay. So if you're not sure, where's the longest side? That's the hypotenuse. All right. And remember that the hypotenuse doesn't touch the right angle. It's across from it. So the hypotenuse is the one out of the three sides that doesn't come in contact with the right angle. All right, so there's the basics on legs and hypotenuse. All right, we're going to go take a look at some examples right now and do some practice to make sure you have this vocab straight and in your head. 